what is up y'all this is a wheelbarrow project uh, wasn't really hoping to do this but I got a ton of bricks over there that I need to move and this happened to break it broke in two spots it broke right here where the bolt goes through and then as you can see it broke right there but I had already had that splinted and fixed but this situation is gonna be different right here so what you need to do is just remove the hardware I got this side right here got one out on this side one actually is part of the part that broke off so it for now doesn't even need to be uh, taken out but I will need to use some vice grips and possibly some sort of a penetrating fluid to get that off because it is very on there and then I gotta remove these and then take some measurements on the, the side part and what I'm gonna do is hopefully I have enough but I have some one by this is basically the same size it's close it's probably not perfect hopefully I can get both handles out of one piece and that would be nice so I've got that whoa I've got that one by I'm just gonna cut it over here on my saw and I gotta measure it find out the length and uh, I'm gonna use the one that's not broken as the length because the one that's broken is missing a chunk and I don't know where it is so that'll be the first step in fixing one of these types of wheelbarrows and uh, one thing on this one that I already fixed many years ago yeah I know you're probably asking me why don't you just go buy another one but anyways a long time ago these were all rusted out so I just took some sheet metal and welded it in and it actually seems like they're starting to rust out again but I don't have the money to buy a new one I've got all you know I got the scrap wood I got the tools so why not who knows save some money even maybe take care of some boredom I've actually got a lot of other work to do but this is kind of standing in my way where well, you're just gonna you know take all these nuts off if they get stuck then you'll have to hold them from the other side yeah those are gonna get stuck because they're basically carriage bolts so what I'll have to do is actually uh, and I won't be able to film this because I don't have a tripod for my phone it actually broke but they're spinning on the back side here so I'm gonna have to grab them with whatever I can and then I'll let you know all right so since these carriage bolts they are square at the top um, but I do believe when I repaired it, I just drilled a round hole, and that's partially why they're not grabbing. So uh, I just gotta do the same to this one and this one, and then that sucker's apart. So just grip it the best way you can. And uh, I don't know if I can actually do this while I'm holding this phone. Cause some of them aren't sticking out very far. Yeah, so. limitations while you're holding the phone okay on this one it was a little bit trickier I actually had to stick a screwdriver in there and try to you know keep it from spinning out while I uh, pried a little bit this way what it did was give me enough room to where I could bite into it with the vice grips so just figure it out as you go I guess next Okay, just for reference sake, you want to make sure that the uh, this black plastic piece right here goes in the exact same way that it came off because the shorter end is going to be here. This is where the shorter bolts are going to go. And this is all about to fall apart because it's not even, not even hooked. And uh, also probably pay attention to how those were, which I didn't. So that'll be fun. 
Um, so it's pretty much apart, except for the fact that a couple of these bolts are stuck. But this part is apart. Got all the hardware right there. Chilling. We're gonna move our tools out of the way and just keep all the hardware for now underneath the wheelbarrow. Just like that. So now we have this one good piece, and by good I mean it's it's okay, it's decent. And there's a couple of different ways that we can go about making a handle. Um, I've got extra extra broom handles and whatnot like this. I could drill holes to the appropriate size, stick them in, or I can take my grinder and I can just shape this just like that with um, flap wheels. It's really not very hard, it's just time consuming. And really the handle doesn't need to be like eight feet long when it comes to that, just kind of get it right there. Maybe even leave like a little bit of this a little square so it doesn't slip out of your hand. But we'll figure that out as we go. I'm gonna make sure I get all this stuff straightened out to where I know how it goes back together. All right, so this is the um, the way that it sits from back to front, I do believe, because it comes together at the end. That's further apart at this side, so that's how that goes, just for reference. Yeah, you can see how it curves in, curves in, and uh, now we're ready to make some measurements and some cuts. Well, actually, I'm going to get two more bolts out that are pretty stuck on there, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them off or not. Uh, I could just leave that off altogether and design it a little bit different, but we'll see. I ain't gonna lie, taking that one apart right there, that was a bitch. I had to grip it a couple different times, bent my screwdriver tip. This is a brand new one of those five in one or whatever piece of crap Pittsburgh screwdrivers, but now it's ruined. I'm not upset about it, but. And see how this is bent, it needs to be bent back. So, vice grips again, that'll come into play. That's probably hot. Those are the front hardwares. Uh, here's some of the uh, wheel mounting hardware so we just got to keep everything straight but now we have this one good one and if yours happen to both break just find as much of it as you can to piece it back together because what you're going to need is the measurements for your bolt holes bolt holes bolt holes and more boats and holes. I mean bolt holes. So that's how that's gonna work. Now if you want to, um, and you're really, really good at stuff like this, you could run this axle through the wood itself, which uh, will wear out quicker. But if you wanted to do that, instead of having the, like say your hardware gets destroyed, just go ahead and find where they go, which is right here, and just drill a hole at whatever angle it needs to be. You might actually have to put it together first so you can figure out the angle, and then just do that, and then figure out a way. Don't drill all the way through, of course, and then keep that axle just right up in those holes. You could do that with like a Forstner bit, Forstner bit, not really sure what they're called, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the axle mounts the way they are, or the way they, that it came. So, and this wheel, it's got decent bearings in it, and it, for some reason, and this is like a 25, 30, 40 year old tire and wheel, and this thing is still holding air. I think I might have put a tube in it though, so I can't remember. Yeah, it might have a tube in it. So that's that. So basically, this is the first step. We got to get uh, 
The dimensions on this are not going to quite be the same. The, the board that I'm using, which is that blue tipped one right there, it's a little bit more square than this one is. But I think that's going to be just fine. It's actually going to add a little bit of strength. And as long as that's straight enough, it's not going to cause me any issues. But we'll find out. Okay, so you can see what, where I'm going with this. Uh, this this piece is pretty fucking square. So, but as long as the dimensions are close this way, it's not going to matter because your bolts are going to be the pretty close to the correct length, and they do have some variation because of the way this the threads go all the way down. You're just fine. This one's actually bent, which is not good. And I'm pretty sure I just got stung by something. But anyways, like I'm saying, this is actually going to be a little bit stronger. So what you can do, if you're lazy and you don't want to use a tape measure, just hold it up there and mark it. Just do that. And I'll show you how easy that is. Literally just, just line them up as close as you can. Uh, looky here. Boom. Good to go. No measurements involved. I'm probably going to have to use both sticks, actually. I got two of them. I thought I was going to be able to use one for two, but I think it's a little bit too long. So we'll just get this one cut real quick. Alright, so we got our wood and our saw. I'm just holding it with a clamp because it was going all haywire and I just wanted to film this. But just line up your bird's mouth as close as possible to the, you know, the blade, the edge of the blade. Doesn't have to be perfect because, like I said, this is a wheelbarrow. So, doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go. I actually cut it. I actually cut it a little bit too long, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Now if you want to and be lazy again, you could literally just hold these two together and then take the pencil that you lost way over here. I usually like to make straight lines like this that way I burn the line and that's what I'm gonna do but this has a wicked bow on this side so that's why I'm taking mostly from this side so I gotta remember this is going off this is going to scrap so let's get it set up on the saw uh, I don't know if this is just a me thing but I like to measure from this end and I always Put my line here so when i go and i put my saw down i usually like i said i burn the line well, when i burn the line it's easier to do from this left side when you're looking from this right side you're looking around the motor and uh certain saws don't have that but this is just how i've always done it and it can be like a little trick for you if you don't do it that way but uh yeah if you don't want your piece to Go flying on you. Should be relatively lined up. Alright, so you can see that the line got burned away, and uh, that's pretty much it. Let's see how let's see how far off I am. I always love to test my pieces. I'm getting a call right now, and it's kind of annoying, but, oh, look at that. That's how you know how you're good at doing nothing. You're good at guessing. So then, what we gotta do, is we just gotta figure out which direction these are going, uh, according to the warp in the boards, and various different things, and then, Start drilling some holes, marking and drilling some holes. So we'll get to that. Okay, I got my two boards here. 
First off, what I want to do is look down these boards. And as you can see, it's got a little, a little bit of a warp to it. And so what we're going to do is actually, we're going to crown this up. So the, the crown or the, the top of the bow is going to be up. This one is fairly straight. It's hard to tell, but it's fairly straight. So I'm just going to leave it exactly like this. And then what I'm going to do is take my square and I'm going to line this up and line them all up and I'm just going to square right across them. I'm going to mark the center of the holes and then I'm going to come back and mark the center hole this way and then just use like a punch or a screw or if you've got one of, one of these, it's just like a, I don't know what this exactly is called but just anything to to make it easier so your bit doesn't wander it's not gonna wander too much in wood but it can so I'm gonna set that up real quick so a really easy way to line these up pretty much perfect is to just push it with your square and then we're gonna take our square and we're going to Put it on the old piece so we can get the center and we're going to squeeze it. Try to get the, the pencil in the center. We're going to squeeze it and mark it. So just pretend like I'm drawing. Because I can't really do this without my other hand. Okay, so it's going to look like this, that, that. And then all we have to do is find the center. So it's not very difficult. I did mark right here, and this is why. So what we're gonna do is move this out of the way. Then we're gonna take our square, we're gonna follow that line. Right around the edge, right around the corner. And you can see that this is one and a half. So three quarters is going to be your center mark. If it's not one and a half, then you might need to do some calculations but really it's not that difficult get on your calculator and divide but set that like that and we draw the line and then just so we know this is a reference yeah I know that was not in the right spot just so we know as a reference that's where that hole is going to go and I'm going to do the same thing on this one Hand. Really hard to do stuff with only one hand. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one, and then we're gonna start uh, centering, which isn't too hard. Like I said, it's three quarter. So just make a mark at three quarter, and it's it's just as easy as like you can see that this goes to one and a half or roughly around. So center line is gonna be right there by my thumb thumbnail. And literally, you can just put the pencil right in that mark and you can just go back and forth and so you got a little, little plus sign. All right, I, uh, I marked these two right here. And uh, if you have any sort of a, like a question about whether or not you're gonna drill straight through, Make up you a quick 90 degree jig. Basically just take uh, two boards and just kind of kind of butt join them together or end join them and that'll keep your bit straight. But I'm just gonna eyeball it. I don't really care. If I need to, I'll wobble it out a little bit. But I'm using an 11, 11 30 seconds on my rigid drill. And that's how I'm gonna get it done. These rigid drills, they are really underrated like super underrated. The impact, I'm not impressed with, but I do use it a lot. But as far as these drills go, like this is the older one. This is the Gen 5X. And this one does seem to have some sort of an issue when it comes to the chuck. It sometimes loosens up on me. I don't know if that's a manufacturer defect or whatever, but if you crank it down really, really hard, you shouldn't have any issue.
but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes best I can. And I'm gonna need some scrap wood to throw underneath it so I don't drill into the concrete. Or you can just throw it over the grass if you're really lazy like me. You, you might hit rocks, but honestly, on these drill bits, I don't care because they're Harbor Freight. So I'm gonna start drilling, marking and drilling. I gotta mark the rest of the centers and then just drill them all. And then hopefully this bolt will fit. So it's a little bit bigger than 11:30 seconds, but like I said, um, if I need to go bigger, the next one is the next one's. A, it's kind of a little bit too big for these bolts, so I don't want to go too big. But if I have to, I'll step up to the next one, which is uh, 23 60 fourths, freaking fractions kind of just thought of something else if you want to you can mark both sides drill a little bit into this one drill a little bit into this one until they meet up that way you know the outside of your your uh, your holes are gonna be clean and then if there's any wobbliness in the inside who gives a shit so that's another trick there you go that trick worked perfect uh, I did have a little bit of blowout but but I drilled one side Flipped it over, drilled another until they met up. I think I flipped it back over and started drilling again on the other side. So I'm gonna come back when I have all these drilled out. We're gonna see what it looks like. All right, so this is what one of them is gonna look like. You know, you can clean these up if you want to, but it really doesn't matter because it's gonna be pinched in between stuff. So uh, just take a razor knife and just kind of rip those off. But as you can see, I tried to keep them as centered as possible. I did have to wobble that one out a little bit because it started in crooked because it's on the grain side. You see the smoother sides. And then like a grainy side, well it gripped the grain and just went sideways on me. I got another one to do. Let's do that one real quick. Got these all marked out, ready to drill. Make sure you label which side's the top or you're gonna lose that bow. And on the back side as well. Alright, if you didn't uh, pay attention or take any reference pictures, you can just kind of read the clues of which way these go. You can see that which parts were covered and which ones were exposed. And also down here it does the same where the where the little gap is in the plastic. You can kind of tell where it goes. It's just we're ready to throw these on here and uh, line some shit up, I guess. Probably best to be doing it one at a time. But uh, I'm going to have trouble filming this, so I'll just show you the end, end result. Now, if you wanted to, if you had some sort of a lathe or some sort of a machine to carve this handle in, you might as well do it now. Or like I said, you can make a separate handle, cut that shorter, and then just attach it somehow uh, with brackets or whatever you want to do. It's up to you. But I'm just going to probably grind them, leave them square. I don't even care at this point. I just need to move these bricks. So I'm trying to make this as fast as possible, which is making it slower by filming it. So it's going to start looking a little something like this. And then we gotta put the rest of it on before we can actually put the bolts in. And then the end of it has to be, well it has to be straightened out and then get the end cap on it. But that's kind of what it's gonna look like. And uh, these do come apart. So as long as you have the correct one, I do believe that these just go on like that. They flip over and go this direction. We'll find out. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Uh, you're gonna have to put one on and then you're gonna have to put this brace in and then twist the other one and then put it on. So these little short ones, they like to fall back through. So just put the nut on it till you're ready, but don't put it on very far. Just put it on enough to hold it from falling through until you're ready. And then look, we almost have a new one. Almost a new one. And then finally this metal part will give out. As you can see, the rust. But we're almost done. We just gotta put that front wheel brackets on 
and then we don't tighten any of this up leave it all somewhat loose just leave it just wiggle loose like I got that one finger tight but just leave them you know like that whatever that way everything can line up for sure as we're doing it and so when it comes to this this is the one I'm gonna have to figure out how to get out but we're gonna mount these the correct direction this is a stopper for the axle and they are adjustable so it's gonna go like that and then you're gonna need to adjust this side to side and try to square it up the best for a straight line down the center so yeah I gotta get this off real quick one thing I forgot to mention is there's these uh, axle spacers and what they do is they slide on the axle like that and they keep the wheel as close to center line as possible and I lost one of them I don't know if this is even one of the originals or if it's the one I cut for it but I've lost one of them so I need to find something that is either pipe like or like I said previously I can take like a handle like this and drill a hole down the center of it and make one but if I could find something that's already hollow like this right here now that's close it's close to the diameter it's gonna be a little loose and may make a little noise but seems to be just some sort of a a pipe if this was a a little bit softer metal I'd cut it on my miter saw but probably just end up using this sawzall right here and uh, obviously it's gonna have to be cut to where that squished part is gone so like right there and then we'll cut it for length because I don't actually know how long it needs to be not yet so I had a little bit of trouble with this it's uh it's all bent so it's actually holding this a little bit crooked I tried to bend it back the best I could but I don't have a vise or anything like that here so I'm just gonna deal with it this one I couldn't get tight because it's for some reason uh, I think it's stripped and it's bent so it's just it's, it's on there pretty well so what we're gonna do is start tightening these other ones down but first uh, I gotta cut that wheel center out so I can have a spacer because like I said it goes on the axle and then keeps the spacing so that the wheel is somewhat centered let's figure that out all right so I cut like uh, about an inch of that pipe I don't know if that's gonna work real well but it'll yeah it's kind of loose kind of sucks but what it'll do is keep that space because if there's not a space then the wheel is gonna actually go back and forth now what I, I actually needed to cut it a little bit longer to keep it in the center uh, it's it'll be all right it's gonna be close enough now what we got to do is tighten all these down and see if we can't get some of that flex out and then we're gonna adjust this this is still loose so we're gonna tighten these down and then we'll adjust the wheel so it's as straight as possible and then we're done except for the handles I don't know if I'm gonna mess with them I might just get right on the brick brick moving I don't know. Alright, so everything is tightened up as snug as I can get it uh, without messing too much with these stupid screw heads. This is all tight. The only thing left is handles, like I said. But uh, maybe for now I'll just forget that and just use it how it is. Well, she's, she's sturdy. And that's how you rebuild a wheelbarrow. Barrel, barrel, barrel. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.